And now I'm going to hit screen share so Joe can share his screen. Okay. So welcome everyone to our life skills workshop entitled Basic Car Care. Our presenter is Joe Desa from Bristol Community College Facilities Office. So Joe, I will now hand it off to you to start your presentation. Thank you, Liz. Welcome everyone. I think today's information will be fairly easy to follow along. Uh, most people should be able to do all this stuff and it is all real important. Uh, car maintenance is, I think most people when they think of car maintenance, it's uh, go to the gas station and put gas in the car. Uh, it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> and a lot of it could be safety, you know, can really uh, impact sa your safety driving the vehicle and, and certainly uh, long-term wear and tear on the vehicle. So first thing I'd like to talk about is something that most people never think about, and that's tires. So next slide, please. So with tires, tire pressure is a very important as it affects safety, economy, and vehicle upkeep costs. You can always find the correct tire pressure for your vehicle, either stamped just inside your door. If you, if you open up your door right on the post, you'll see a sticker. And in that, on that sticker, it'll tell you what the correct air pressure is for that, for that car. You can also find it on the tires. The tires themselves have a stamp that tells you what the maximum tire pressure is. Now, I like to try to get the most wear out of the tires that I buy. Uh, if you run your tires at maximum pressure, you'll get the maximum wear for the tire. If the car might ride a little bit harder than normal, like you'll, you'll notice it's not, it's not as, as cushioned, uh, but you get a lot more miles out of the tire. So it's something that I, I recommend uh, as, as, as you see in, in the, 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 next, the next piece there. And uh, depending upon your style of driving, your tires should be rotated approximately every eight to 10,000 miles. Uh, that again, increases the life of the tire and you get an even wear all around. Uh, that's pretty much about tires. So next, next slide. So fluids, most, if not all manufacturers now use either a synthetic or semi-synthetic engine oil, which requires changing less frequently. Semi-synthetic oil should be changed at 5,000 mile intervals. Full synthetic oil can go up to 10,000 miles. I personally change them at 7,500. Uh, I've always been an advocate of, of oil changes, you know, before synthetic oil came about, uh, the, the, the number was every 3,000 miles. And even at then, I never waited till three. I usually went about 2,500. Uh, but 7,500 for full synthetic and 5,000 for semi-synthetic would, would certainly be sufficient. Uh, transmission oil is something that you should change every 30,000 miles. It's especially important if you do any kind of towing, if you tow a small camper or a boat trailer, uh, it really does put a lot more stress on the transmission. Uh, so changing that fluid every 30,000 miles is important. That can be done at a local transmission shop or your, your dealer can also do that for you. Uh, brake fluid doesn't necessarily need to be changed. What happens with your brake fluid is as your brakes wear down, the fluid in the reservoir makes up that difference. So you don't really notice a difference in your brake pedal. The brakes still work fine. Uh, but it is important to keep an eye on that because as, as that gets low, that's telling you that it's time to replace your brakes. Uh, and just a little side note, as soon as you begin to hear any type of a noise when you step on the brake, that's when you want to go get the car serviced. There's little things called warning tabs on the braking system so that as the pad gets low, you get that sound. It's supposed to make you want to go and, and get it serviced because if you wait too long, you end up having to purchase additional parts and what, what would normally be a not too expensive repair turns into a much more expensive repair. So side note, when you hear the noise, make an appointment. Uh, that's fluids. And how about the next slide, Julius? So with winter coming up soon, this is a very important thing. If anyone has ever been on a highway during bad weather or shortly after bad weather and you happen to be behind a salt truck, 
you'll know exactly what I mean. If you run out of washer fluid, you can't see. Uh, so one of the things you should do is, is change. I rule of thumb is at least once a year, you should probably change your, your windshield wipers. Uh, most, if not all, total pot stores sell windshield wipers and they will replace them for you. If you're a handy kind of person, there are instructions right on the package. And as I think most people do, you can go right online and YouTube it or Google it and you'll be able to get some pretty easy instructions on how to, how to, how to, how to swap those over. Uh, anything else I left out there? I think that was it, yeah. Uh, so next slide, please, please. This is my favorite. If anybody knows me, knows that I like to keep my car shiny clean. And part of that is maintenance, just like everything else. Uh, with the time coming, salt really does a job, not only on the finish of the car, but also the undercarriage. Uh, what you can do to protect the undercarriage is you can go to the car wash and specific car washes will have a button that you can push that when you go through the automatic wash, it'll spray underneath the car and try to wash away some of that corrosion. What you can do to try to protect the body is you can wax the car. Uh, it's, it's a very simple procedure. It's a little bit labor intensive. I like to do it myself, but there are plenty of folks out there that can do that work for you. Uh, but it's really important. It, it protects the exterior of the car. It'll also help protect against that corrosion because the corrosion will also affect the body, not just underneath on the undercarriage. Uh, so I do that every year just before the winter and uh, it really makes a big difference. It's kind of what I had for basic stuff. I am certainly open to any questions that folks might have. I actually got a quick question for you. Sure, thank you, Steve. No problem. When it comes to tire pressure, right? What if, uh, like for example, sometimes on trucks people put all-terrain tires on the on the trucks, right? Uh, when, for example, my truck it has on the door. I think it only says for uh, um, PPM, so like the tire actual pressure is I think thirty uh, psi. But if you look at the tire itself, it says eighty psi. So in that situation where they don't actually line up, probably because of the, the tread on the tire, uh, do you follow the vehicle or do you follow the actual tire itself? So the number that's on the car that, that would be on that on the door post, on the information label that I told you about, that reflects the tire pressure with the original manufactured tires on the vehicle. Uh, okay. Most most times, if you know, if you bring your car to a tire shop to have tires replaced, they will put the same kind of tire on the vehicle unless you ask for something different. If you have a tire that's different than what the manufacturer installed in the car, then you go by what's stamped on the tire. Uh, okay. You know, it'll again, it'll it'll affect air pressure, affects mileage, affects handling. Uh, but you go with the, if it's not the same one, you, you want to go with what's on the tire. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Steve. Joe, is there ever such a thing as overinflating your car tires? Very, and that's, it's, I'm glad you said that because yes, you can overinflate. And in fact, it's a very dangerous thing. Uh, you know, the, you could go on YouTube and look at videos of people inflating tires and the things explode and you can, you can, somebody can really get hurt and killed. So yeah, never ever go over the amount that is either stamped on the door or stamped on the tire. Good to know. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Very welcome. Uh, and just randomly, uh, you know, the, the oil changing is probably one of the most important things you can do to your vehicle to, 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 for, for engine life. Uh, you know, I, I had, I had a, a 1977 Cougar that I bought with 150,000 miles. And I knew the person I bought it from, and they were a real fanatic, and they changed it all, all the time. I drove that car 275,000 miles without any kind of major, you know, engine malfunctions, and I just simply changed it all every 3,000 miles. You know, it uh, really can make a huge difference. Uh, Joe, yeah, not, not to, sure. to um, you know, promote any local mechanics in the area, but is there 
anybody that you know that offers like reasonable prices for students looking to get cars, you know, fixed or repaired at, you know, without paying like big dealership costs? Yeah, so you're right. Dealerships do, do charge quite a bit more. Uh, there are only a few. I mean, I would only recommend Dave's Tire and, and Auto in Fall River. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, uh, oh my God, his name is escaping me. As you can tell, I do most of the repairs myself, but there's a, there's a, there's a place right on Route 6 in Swansea, uh, right across the street from the Salvation Army. I'm sorry. Uh, is that Nahas Auto? There you go. Very, thank you no, very much. That, yeah, it's the <laughs> Nah. So yeah, it's N A N A H A S Nahas Auto. Uh, yep. I actually it know one of the It used to be uh, G and L as well. Yep. I actually, I know him very well. Yeah. So you know, the, you'll two reputable places, cheaper than the dealer, uh, and they do really good work. So I would, I would recommend both Nahas and Swansea and Dave's Tire and Auto and Fall River. Can I make a comment? You most certainly can. All right, in um, in uh, Somerset, right on um, County Street, there's Norwest Auto. It's okay. owned by two young men. They're brothers, uh, Billy and Bobby. The, the Jalberts and my kids go there because I or at some point I'm like I'm done paying for your cars. Pay yourself. <laughs> so, and they're very, you know, and they'll. They, not that they do the bare minimum, they understand that there's a budget involved. So if they can fix something as opposed to replacing it, they'll do that. And uh, I've found them uh, very good, very good that way, that they'll, they'll work with you. I actually also wanted to put a plug out for George's Auto Tech. He's in Fall River. He's right on Bedford Street. He's so nice and he takes, works on all kinds of cars and he never says no. You know, you drive in, the place is always packed. His prices are extremely reasonable and he's just a really honest guy. And I think he has so much business, he doesn't know um, what to do with it. So that's a really good sign that he's a good, you know, um, good businessman because he's always um, just getting tons of business. Yep. That's, that's good. Those are, those are good, good tips. I appreciate the help with those. Thank you. Do we have any in New Bedford or Attleboro, I wonder? I'm sure if you give me about 30 seconds, I can figure out one of each. Uh, <laughs> are you a mechanic, Steve? <laughs> no, I have a lot of friends that are in it. So, All right. Um, well, good to know. Yeah. Luckily, as soon as I, I had seen the, uh, the email, I was like, this is definitely something I should attend. <laughs> um, so I know in Westport, there's uh, Westport Tire. His name is Mike Perry, the owner. He's incredibly good. Um, in New Bedford, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's off of Route 6. It's kind of near where CVS is. There's a place like right off on the corner. I can't remember the name of it. Um, and then I believe the other one is Mid Cape. That's in New Bedford. They're very reputable, um, have been in service for a while. That's great. Uh, in terms of Attleboro, Unfortunately, everybody that I know in Attleboro that works on cars is either moved or retired at this point currently. So, but. Well, that's Sorry. helpful information. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thank you very You're much. Welcome. Does anybody have any further questions for Joe? Joe, thank you for covering the basics. I mean, I know it sounds very simple, but it's very good information to have. I know it's good information for me to have in my back pocket. Yeah, tire pressure and, and, and windshield wipers and changing your fluids. It's all stuff that, that really, really does lead to safe and, and long, mile-free, you know, water-free miles of driving. And thank you for letting um, me record this presentation. So I'll ask if maybe I can put it on the Career Services website. So if folks maybe couldn't make it, at least they can get the information from the experts. So that's great. Great. Thank you very much. Any further questions for Joe? Uh, I do. All right, I, I go, quick, Steve, you're on a roll. I got a quick question. If if uh, you were to make like an emergency kit, like for example, try, tire pressure gauge, maybe jumper cable, stuff like that, what would be like five or six things you would put in an emergency kit that, that most people should have 
in their vehicle, especially with winter approaching? So, in, you know, thinking about the time of year, that, 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 that's a, a, a good thing. Uh, you probably want to have, you want to say five things. So they sell a product, lock the ISA. It's a little pressured cylinder that you can put right where you put your key in and it, it instantly de-ices the lock so you can get into the car. That, that, that's an important thing. Uh, I would bring, I would keep a, some, some antifreeze, some, some coolant in the vehicle. Uh, you know, if you, if you got a leak, you don't want to, last thing you want to do is run out of, run out of coolant because then you can cause some real severe engine damage. So if you had a small leak, you could, you could add some, some coolant into the vehicle. Uh, hmm, that's a good question, Steve. I'm trying to, try to I don't, I don't have an emergency pack in my car. <laughs> But, uh, I think I'm going to have one now, though. <laughs> I go on in mine, and my I, my kids got each one for Christmas presents too. I've got them at like AAA. Oh, AAA. Yep, it's yeah. got jumper cables. It's got. It actually has a bottle of water in it, a flashlight. Yep. It's got. Um, yeah, tie gear. It's got. It's got a blanket. I was going to say, oh, say blanket. Say that blanket. Some road. Some road uh, reflectors. A flare or a, a road reflector. Yep. 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 My blanket is good. Uh, and you know what? Believe it or not, I, I roll of duct tape. Uh, yep. you, know, you, you might laugh, but you got you got a hose that's cracked. You can put some duct tape on and get yourself home, you know? Yep. Uh, and, you know, yeah. this may seem like a crazy question, but with COVID going on, when you bring your car in, do most mechanics kind of wash down the car after they're done servicing it for you? So I, I, I have seen that. I've seen where they actually have, like, a, a, a person who after each car is serviced, that's all his, that's his whole responsibility is he, he, he you know, does a detail. Not only do they clean them, but they disinfect them. So yeah, that, that, that is happening at most service stations. That's good to hear. Excellent. Okay, well, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I want to thank everyone for coming and, and uh, I hope this information is helpful. It's very helpful, Joe. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time and hopefully We'll get this up on our website so everyone can share the goodwill. We appreciate your time. Very good. And thank you, Steve, for your questions. Very good job. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Have a good day, okay? Everybody Thanks, have folks. a great day. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.